a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video 1 and introduction. Video 3A, elimination, zero and first order elimination and elimination rate constant. What is zero and first order elimination? In fact, the majority of drugs exhibit either zero or first order elimination. And of those, the majority probably exhibit first order elimination. However, let's look at zero order first of all. And to do this, we're going to use a model. Here is a pot of blue liquid. And over some period of time, one hour in our model, that pot loses some mass of blue liquid, mass M. Over the next hour, the pot loses the same mass M. And over the next hour, again, the pot loses the same mass M. Let's say pot one starts off with one gram of blue liquid and M is 100 milligrams. Then pot two contains 900 milligrams. Pot three contains 800 milligrams. And pot four contains 700 milligrams. So the pots lose a constant mass per time with zero order elimination. Let's turn our attention to first order elimination and we'll use the same model. Here is our pot of blue liquid. Over time, one hour in this model, instead of losing some mass, the pot now loses some constant fraction, F. Over the next hour, it loses fraction F, and over the next hour, it loses fraction F. So again, let's say pot one has one gram of blue liquid, and we'll take F equals 0.5, then pot two has 500 milligrams, pot three has 250 milligrams, and pot four as 125 milligrams. So we are going to lose a constant fraction per time with first order elimination. This is our zero order elimination model. Let's translate that to drug in plasma. Here is a plot on a linear scale of drug concentration over time representing zero order elimination. And you can see the plot is a straight line showing linear decline. Let's look at first order elimination. And again, we have our drug concentration versus time on a linear plot. But this time, instead of a straight line, we have a curve. And that's because First order elimination is exponential decline. Now we can transform that curve by taking one of the scales, the y-axis, and plotting that on a logarithmic scale. This is a semi-log plot. So first order elimination on a semi-log plot gives you a straight line. You will remember this plot from video two. It is the oral dose of pretendolone on a semi-log plot. And I said in video two, the reason why we use a semi-log plot will be revealed in video 3A. Well, we are now in video 3A 
and the the art the reason should be obvious that a straight line on the semi log plot shows that elimination is by first order now why I'm here there's just another point that I want to touch upon because it can be confusing that the data on the y-axis are not transformed to logarithms but merely displayed on a logarithmic scale so for example if you have a drug concentration of 65.71 nanograms per mil you do not take the logarithm of that value you take the actual value and plot it onto the logarithmic scale a log 10 scale is used really out of convenience because it displays orders of magnitude it's 1 to 100 in this case however in theory you could use a log to any base and you will still get that straight line for first order elimination. Having clarified that, now let's quantify the rate the drug is eliminated. And we can quantify that from the slope of the straight line portion or the exponential portion of the semi-log plot. We are going to use the oral data for pretendolone as an example and we'll now calculate the slope of the line for pretendolone. A quick note for those who are following along in the textbook the approach in the video is slightly different to that in the textbook but the outcome is exactly the same. In order to quantify the rate of elimination, we're going to take some data points from the semi-log plot. Concentration C1 at time T1 and drug concentration C2 at time T2. The difference in time there, of course, is T2 minus T1. We're going to call the slope minus K. The negative sign is there because the slope is a declining drug concentration. We are now going to use the standard equation for exponential decay. You will see this equation anywhere that there is exponential decay. It could be first order kinetics. It could be radioactive decay. It's a standard and common equation. And the equation is C2 equals C1 multiplied by Euler's number to the power of minus K multiplied by that time difference. This equation calculates the concentration at C2 from the concentration at C1 over a given time period. Euler's number E is included because we are dealing with an exponential, not a linear decline. We are going to meet this equation a number of times in future videos. What we need from this equation, of course, is the, uh, the slope of the line minus k. So we have to solve the equation for minus k. I'm not going to go through this step by step. I'm just showing it here. And you end up with minus k equals the natural log of C2 divided by C1, all divided by that time difference. Let's just pop that equation up in the corner to give ourselves a little room. Note that the right-hand side of the equation returns a negative value, and therefore the final value for k is positive. We'll come back to this again in just a moment. k is known as the elimination rate constant, and it has, it has units of per time, typically per hour. So let's now calculate the elimination rate constant for pretend alone. To do this, we go to our table of data. These data were first shown in video two, 
they offer the single oral dose of 50 milligrams pretendolone. We'll just take some drug concentrations and time points. We'll take T1 as four hours and T2 as 36 hours. So therefore, C1 is 65.71 nanograms per mil and C2 is 1.31 nanograms per mil. Why did I choose this particular time point? Well, the only rule is that they have to be along the elimination phase. That is the exponential portion of the semi-log plot. But otherwise, there aren't really any other fixed rules. The rationale for choosing T1 and T2 is explained further in the textbook. We're not going to go that into that now. What we'll do is we'll use those values to calculate the elimination rate constant. So here is the equation. We'll now populate that with the values from the table. So there is C2, there is C1, there is our time difference. So if we calculate that, we get minus K equals minus 0 0.122 per hour. Since there are minus signs on both sides of that equation, K equals 0 0.122 per hour. The elimination rate constant K for pretend alone is 0 0.122 per hour. The elimination rate constant is used in a number of other pharmacokinetic parameters and we'll discover that in future videos. It is actually quite difficult to visualise what the elimination rate constant means and so elimination is commonly quantified using another pharmacokinetic parameter called half-life and that is the subject of video 3b.